polpettone di tacchino con salsa di funghi. If there ever was a comfort food, meatloaf is gotta be it. But today I'm making a lighter version, all turkey meat. And I'm gonna flavor it deliciously, Italian style, and then add flavor with a nice mushroom sauce. So let's begin with the meatloaf. Um, to begin, I like to use old bread, soak it in milk, let it soak the milk up, and then I just squeeze the milk out, and I just crumble the bread in the meatloaf, so. Okay. To bind it all, we're gonna put a little bit of salt in the eggs, just a little bit, like that, and whisk it. Okay. I have here a little bit of breadcrumbs in case I want some more kind of binding power, but I don't want it too dry, so maybe a little bit like that. Parsley. We like lots of parsley. Diced red pepper. And then I love scallions, you know, all the way up. The green part of it too. And that adds a lot of flavor. I'm gonna put some salt now to salt the meat. And grated cheese is great, gives it a lot of flavor. So let's put that in. Okay. So now I'm gonna have to get in there and make this meatloaf happen. So. And you wanna mix all the ingredients throughout the meat. So when you cut into it, you get a little bit of everything in every slice. Okay, now it's time to, to shape it up. A nice baking pan, just a little bit of oil. So let me just give it some sort of a shape. Just pour it into right into the baking pan. That's it like that, and let's give it a nice shape here. Ah, that looks good. Just a little bit of oil, just like that. You know, a lot of you tell me, Lydia, we love the way you touch food. And you know what? I love touching food because it just talks to me. It tells me, it tells me a lot. It was, he was telling me that it's just a little bit sticky, but I like that because that means it's gonna be soft and tender. But then I said, okay, we need to even it out with a little bit of oil so it roasts beautifully. Aluminum foil. The meatloaf will go in a 375 degree hot oven for 45 minutes. You uncover it another 40, 45 minutes, in the meantime, we'll make a great mushroom sauce and we're ready to enjoy. The meatloaf is resting. You have to give it a rest after it bakes. So let's make the mushroom sauce. So some olive oil, some shallots, and we're gonna flavor it with some fresh sage, tomato paste, mushrooms, you know, just sliced. So here I have some cremini, I have some shiitake, uh, but if you have porcini, if you have uh, grifo la fondosa, all of those mushrooms will make it better and better. Just a little bit of salt. So I'm gonna throw in some sage, and I'm gonna throw in like this, a whole sprig, three, four, because then I wanna pick them up. Sage is really pronounced and is great with mushrooms, but you don't wanna eat it and we can put in the mushrooms. Mm. A little bit of salt for the mushrooms now. And just a little bit of white wine to get it going. And you know, you always ask, Lydia, what kind of wine? No cooking wine, please. Cooking wine has salt, has all kinds of flavoring, but good. White wine in this case, that you would drink, not too expensive, any leftover wine that you have, absolutely. So I'm gonna cover it, and I'm gonna let the mushrooms sweat it out. But in the meantime, I get questions from you, and I like those questions because I know you're watching, because I know you're inquisitive and you're attentive. 
So I'm going to respond. So Anna Flannery from Kentucky, she wants to know, is there really that big of a difference in taste if you use one meat instead of two or three? I used only turkey meat. But the tradition is that if you mix the meats, it gets kind of more flavor. So chopped pork, chopped beef, even chopped veal, any combination, the more you put in, the different kinds, the more flavorful it is, Anna. So it's up to you what you have, what you like, and you know what your dietary needs are, restrictions are. Just if you do one light meat like I did the turkey, flavor it. You notice I put the scallions, I put the peppers in there, I gave it some flavor. So thank you for asking, Anna. So once the mushrooms have began to release their water, I like to put in some tomato paste. Now tomato paste is those beautiful sun-ripened tomatoes that really delivers a punch of that tomatoiness to whatever you cook. I like to kind of make a little hot spot here, just like that. So here for all these mushrooms, I think I put maybe two teaspoons of the tomato paste. I'm gonna let it cook a little bit. Let's take a look. Mmm, looks beautiful. So you notice a little juice. When I went in and uncovered it, I saw the little caramelization on the bottom of it. And I said, hmm, that's good flavor. I took a little stock and just put it on the bottom and that kind of turned into this beautiful sauce. So let me pull out the... Okay. Let me use this sauce. I have a little bit of stock, so let's. Oh, I see I have another question here. Let, let me address these other questions and then I'll get to the serious business here. So, oh, Sister Barbara Aidelote, Sister Barbara Nanner from New Jersey. So she wants to know, dear Lydia, I tried making meatloaf and it was either greasy or very dry. Sometimes it wasn't even tender. Any idea or suggestion to fix these problems? Well, you know, sister, a little prayer would help, but let's get to the technique of it. Why? Well, you know, first of all, it is the meat that you buy. And if you buy a very fatty beef, chopped beef or something, that will release a lot of fat and a lot of grease. So try mixing it up maybe with a little turkey meat and so on. And then if you noticed, I put in the bread, which was soaked in milk. Then I put a little breadcrumbs. If you put only dry breadcrumbs, that has a tendency to kind of dry it up. Then those vegetables, they all have that wetness when they cook. So little vegetables in there and all of that ends up to a nice and moist meatloaf. So sister, with a little prayer, you'll get a good meatloaf. And of course, sister, make a sauce on the side like this. If all things fail, just put some sauce on top. So let me see. Oh, it looks beautiful, huh? And you see, it looks juicy. You know what? The end piece, that's my for tasting. This is a, a nice presentation, just like that. The sauce looks good. Let me just remove the sage, the whole branch right out. It has given all the flavor. I wanna add a little bit more of, of flavor in here, the last minute. And you know, butter does it all the time. But the butter will give you a nice creaminess. So let me put this right close here and mm. so i would not put all of the sauce here i would just kind of put a little bit for decoration that looks good 
I have this, this beautiful sage. So I think that looks pretty good. I want a little bit of sauce for myself. And then let's take all of this sauce and put it in a salsiera. So. Okay, before I deliver it to the table, let me taste some. Mmm, nice and moist. The peppers, the scallions, the sage, beautiful, easy, and delicious. To learn more about Lydia, access to videos, and to get recipes, tips, techniques, and much more, visit us online at lydiasitaly.com.